Hello and welcome to my presentation on early amputee assessment and management uh, for CRAM. It's uh, not often that I teach on CRAM, but I do teach the amputees. Um, so here is the lady that taught me about amputee rehab, uh, Kate Sherman, the Shermanator, um, with uh, a patient called Peter Norton, who's a bit of a legend uh, in the military community, uh, and was my patient for two years. So what we're going to learn from today's lecture, um, we're going to learn how to identify aspects of uh, the process of assessment and management relevant for amputees, um, perform those relevant assessments and adapt our assessment to, uh, to suit that individual, um, give us some early assessment options, and then we're going to develop an exercise program. Of course, we are using their principles and then just talk very briefly about the problems associated with amputee rehabilitation. So that's our learning outcomes for this screencast. So we're going to divide this into four specific areas. Um, so what we want to do is we want to um, talk about the stump. OK, that, that could be the upper limb or the lower limb. It will be part of um, the limb that has been removed. And this is uh, referred to as the stump. Um, then we're talking about the sound limb. OK, this might be the um, the arm or the or the leg. Um, we're assuming that they're not a bilateral amputee. That would be a very different style of rehab. Um, we're going to talk about how the upper limb differs from the lower limb, and then we're going to talk about the importance of balance. Um, that's mainly to do with the lower limb. So they're the four topics we're going to get into today. Um, so we're going to talk about the stump first. Um, so for many people, if you don't deal with amputees, this can be a bit daunting um, because we're seeing part of a limb that is removed. Um, and as we all have limbs, uh, to see them removed can sometimes be a bit disconcerting, particularly for the patient. Um, we're going to talk about that in a little bit, bit more detail, but what do we need to do? Um, so we've got, to, we've got to make sure that the wound has healed. In the photo here, you can see that that wound is healing nicely. Um, there's the surgical stitches in there. And right at the end on the right there, you can see that the wound is open a little bit, and that's quite normal for a stump. Um, and then we've got to think about the swelling. Um, so the stump is going to swell and shrink, swell and shrink day to day, week to week, month to month, year to year until it kind of stabilizes. Um, you're going to have to try and get the patient to touch the stump as, as quickly and as often as they can to kind of get that graded desensitization. Um, you know, letting them know, letting the brain know that the limb is no longer there and uh, uh, effectively um, just helping with that psychological and emotional process of dealing with the bereavement of losing a limb. Um, there's something called a juzo sock. This is to control the swelling that you put kind of on the on the stump. Uh, and measuring the stump edema is going to be really important, um, uh, as well as you know just paying attention to the psychological and emotional needs of your patient, uh, which are going to be paramount during this process. So we've also got to think about the sound limb. Um, and on a lot of our patients, the sound limb is not going to be as good as we hope it is. If they're young, then chances are it is. But normally our patients have peripheral vascular disease, okay, or diabetes, or, or, or some sort of other health pathology and comorbidity, which means that the sound limb is not as good or as healthy as we'd like. We've also got to appreciate that if you're a lower limb amputee, you're now taking your entire body weight on one leg. Um, and that is going to wear you out very quickly. And we need to get you strong enough uh, and give you the endurance um, for you to stand and do activities of daily living. And then eventually, hopefully, walk either in the pamade or with a prosthetic. Um, you're going to have to appreciate that you're going to be in a wheelchair for long periods of time. And you're going to get lots of muscle wasting both in the stump and in the sound limb. So it's really important that the sound limb gets exercised and we maintain that, uh, but being aware of overtraining in the sound limb as well, um, because it, it's really easy um, because you're using the sound limb all the time um, for it to get tired, fatigued uh, as a process of adaptation. Um, if we're talking about the upper limb, this is entirely different from the lower limb and needs to be treated accordingly. Um, we've got some big changes to, to the upper limb because it's really 
you, you think about how important your hands and your arms are in the functions of daily living and life is going to change irreparably. Um, so, you know, we've got to think about the prosthetic rehabilitation. You can get some very um, easy uh, ones, the split hook, which involves sort of moving your shoulder to open and close a hook, um, which is the classic version. And then you've got also all the new intelligent limbs coming in, the so-called eye limbs. Um, using all sorts of different um, ways of, uh, of of doing that. We're also thinking about the the prosthetics that you do use would need to be really high level. And like I said, the split hook is generally our go-to uh, because that can be controlled from the shoulder. Um, we're going to have to start thinking about our activities of daily living, um, you know, putting on our clothes, for example, brushing our teeth, um, you know, going to the loo, having a wash, all that sort of stuff is going to need help and support. And there's lots of things that the OTs can really help out with as well. Um, working, obviously, with the prosthetist, particularly with the upper limb, we've got to think about all the different types of limb we can get. So we can get cosmetic limbs, we can get functional limbs, we can get intelligent limbs, uh, so on and so forth. So balance is going to be hugely important, particularly for our lower limb amputees um, and in particular in gait re-education where we, we might have a prosthetic on, on the end of the stump and imagine that effectively the stump becomes your foot because the terminal part of proprioception of your body is effectively the stump. Now if you're a lower limb amputee below the knee, um, then you can use things like kneeling balance, kneeling balance, single leg kneeling balance, which will be key, which will be key. But if you're above knee, if you're high transfemoral, as in in this picture, that's going to be a lot harder. So we've got to think about how we're going to get that balance. And a nice way to do that is take um, your patient to the hydrotherapy pool, um, because it will just mean that the, they can gain that new center of balance. Uh, and that's going to be really, really useful to them as they effectively shift off centre uh, and their body accommodates to to what's going on. They might develop a small scoliosis. Um, they might develop um, some muscle tightness and all these things that need to adapt and change in order to accommodate their new balance point. Um, here you can see um, that the patient has kind of developed a, a lateral lean to the right to offset the fact that his left leg is amputated taking his uh, centre of gravity over his base of support more. So the PAMAID, what is the PAMAID? It's the post, uh, the pneumatic, which means with air because it's inflatable, post-amputation mobility aid. Okay, and this is really good. It hasn't changed in probably that, about 100 years. Effectively, um, you get uh, an inflatable um, within a metal cage um, and you inflate uh, this balloon that you put on the end of the stump and that protects the stump um, making sure it's only about 40 millimeters of mercury which is roughly the same as our blood vessels uh, and then it allows your patient to stand and actually walk as early as the stump um, has healed um, so it's really important for your patient to stand as often as they can um, because it's going to be basically just good for their lungs. That means they can inflate their bases, increase their FRC. If we're talking about cram, uh, that's what we need to think about. Um, but walking, uh, uh, standing and walking gives your patient hope that they can get back to some sort of normality, um, which has been taken away from them, um, which is, which is uh, really, really challenging. So you'll generally be working with patients, like I said, with PVD, diabetes, um, any sort of cardiac uh, reason why they've had an amputation as well. So getting them walking and exercising them is the best thing because they will be in the wheelchair if they're not on the pamade. Um, and you, normally it's done within a parallel bars with a mirror um, at the end of one side so you can see where you're going and what you're doing. It's a very nice way to do your rehabilitation. Um, so we're going to come on to the psychological effects of amputation. Um, Having seen this in multiple patients uh, and, a, and, a, and a family member, um, I have a unique first-hand experience of, of this kind of cycle of what's going on. So we're going to start here. There's a bit of shock um, and denial that, that this tragic event has happened. When, when you lose a limb, 
it's like losing a loved one. I mean, how much would you love uh, your your hands or your feet? Um, they're very much part of you. So there's this refusal to accept the facts and kind of, uh, you know, dissociate yourself from really what's happening. Um, and that's quite normal. You know, the, the brain has to process this this horrendous event that we've lost a limb uh, under whatever circumstance. It's going to be horrendous for the patient and we need to be empathetic towards that. Then they're going to move when they finally, finally acknowledge that they're probably going to move to anger and they're going to be very upset with themselves and other people throwing blame, um, you know, all, all around the place as they, as they come to terms with this horrendous event. Bless them. Um, eventually, um, they might move to things like bargaining. Uh, bargaining means is if I'd have done this, you know, if I'd have not crossed the road, I wouldn't have got hit by the car. If I'd not gone and joined the army, I wouldn't have got injured in Afghanistan. This kind of retrospective bargaining um, is is also called the what if game. Um, it's very, very important because they start asking the bigger questions uh, of God and their religious belief systems. Um, it's a very difficult time for them. And then finally, they probably might fall into depression, which would be normal and natural to be low in mood and become depressed um, with the terrible things that have happened to them, feeling, you know, sadness and regret um, and, and fear and uncertainty about the future and, and, and what's going on. And then hopefully, probably between one, two, normally a two year cycle that there will be some acceptance of what's happening uh, and they begin to move on with their life and, and, and pick back up where they left off in, in a lot of cases. That would be ideal. Uh, certainly what I saw my family member uh, go through and that's certainly what I've seen with my patients. Uh, but remember that this four step you know, process of acceptance is not in any particular order and it's not a simple process it's not linear uh and and they could be anywhere on this you know on this circle at, at any time so it's important as a therapist that we have some knowledge about what's going on in terms of the psychological the emotional um uh, and the spiritual side of of what's going on with our patient particular amputee patients um so we're going to talk very quickly about phantom limb pain so phantom limb pain and phantom limb sensation are two different things. Phantom limb sensation is where you feel sensation in the limb that's not there. You're projecting that space outside of your body. Uh, and the homunculus, so what you can see is the homunculus man here, needs to remodel. It's called cortical reorganization of the brain. Um, so if you're an upper limb amputee, okay, so the hand is very close to the face, okay? So the hand and face merge. I know one of my patients used to feel um, his hand wiggle when he was shaving on one side. But if you look where the foot is, okay, so the foot, you know, we don't tend to get too much disruption of the homunculus in terms of sensory. Um, so phantom limb pain is where we're getting pain, normally like some sort of vice-like grip or, or a pin or stabbing into a limb that's no longer there. And this is how we know that pain is in the brain. Uh, and we get something called telescoping. So what happens is initially we feel stuff at the toe, then we might feel stuff at the midfoot, heel, okay, shin, and then eventually it finishes with the distal part of the of the stump there. Okay, so it's really fantastic and and, and interesting on that one. But we're going to just finish um, with our exercise program. So what we'd like you to do is come up with some exercise programs for a lower limb amputee. They could be above the knee or they could be below the knee. I've got some suggestions here. You always want to work posterior chain because their hip flex is going to be super tight simply because we don't have the weight of the limb hanging off and they're not going to be a 100% prosthetic user all the time. Uh, and that's important that we don't think they are. They're not going to always have their prosthetic on. Um, we've got to do lots of stabilization around the pelvis with the hip AB and AD ductors uh, and obviously if they were below the knee, we've got to work the hamstrings and the quads as well, keeping them strong, keeping that stability for when they're walking. Um, here you can see that we've got um, quite an advanced prosthetic here. We've got a, a knee, an ankle, and, and there's the uh, there's the cast there, and the stump will be within that uh, part of it. Here you can see that this is designed for function and not fashion. Um, so that was a quick whistle-stop tour 
through early management for lower limb